The goal with our aero builds is to maximize momentum and maximize velocity. So no matter what you're hunting in North America, you need a specific amount of slug feet per second in momentum to pass through. And our goal is to get there as fast as possible. So today we're doing some testing with different weights downrange. So we have a lab radar here. This is gonna track our aero velocity and kinetic energy at impact. So we're gonna go to 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60 yards with a 372 grain arrow, a 444 grain arrow, and a 566 grain arrow. How I'm gonna do this is I have my set distances at 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60 yards. I'm gonna shoot at like 23, 33, 43, 53, and 63. So you get an idea or we have an accurate reading at those 20, 30, 40, 50 yard marks that if your target animal was at that point at impact, that would be your velocity, that would be your kinetic energy, and that would be your momentum at those points of impact. So right now I'm at 24 yards and we'll get a reading at 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 with the 372 grain arrow. Okay, so at launch we're at 298 with the 372 grain arrow. At 20 yards, we lost 10 feet per second, so we're at 288. So shot two at 30 yards with the 372 grain arrow. Again, 298 at launch, 288 at 20, 283 at 30 yards. Uh, 298, 288, 283, 277 feet per second at 40. At 50 yards, we're moving at 271 feet per second. 268 at 60 yards. Let's throw a 444 grain arrow on there. I'm curious right off the rip to see what kind of difference I'm gonna get at launch speed. So let's go, 444. So launch speed with the 372 is like 298. Right now I'm at 275. So right off the rip we lost 14 feet per second by just adding, what is that, 70 grains. Okay, so for time's sake, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot these last two arrows, the uh, 444 and the 566. I'm just gonna shoot them each three times at 60 yards and we'll take the average because that's gonna give us our 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 anyway. So there's no need to move down the range and shoot them all. We'll just shoot them all at 60 and get those readings and uh, we'll come up with some calculations. So 275 at launch, 250 downrange. 275 at launch, 251 downrange. So that's that's consistent. Let's move on to the 566. That sucker lobbed. 246 at launch, so from 275 to 246. And at 60 yards so there, we were at 227 feet per second. Same thing, 246, 228. All right, folks, back in the studio, I have all of this data compiled, and what I'm looking for is which of these arrows is going to get me to my target the fastest with enough momentum to pass through anything in the whitetail. So we did some research online, uh, you can Google this for yourself, and we found a momentum and kinetic energy chart, like recommendations for different games. So you have small game, medium game, large game, and the toughest game in North America, in the world. So let's dive in and take a look at what we found. All right, so let's look down these charts here. You, you can see here we have the arrow number one, 372 grains, arrow number two, 444 grains, and arrow number three at 566 grains. So if we look down through here, you can see I have the kinetic energy at each given yardage. And right off the bat, you can see that the 444 grain arrow has 4.1% more kinetic energy at 60 yards. And that is compared to the 372 grain arrow. So all these numbers are compared to the lightest arrow. The 566 grain arrow has 8.6% more kinetic energy at 60 yards than the 372 grain arrow. Now, this is um, a pretty interesting 
part here, so speed deprivation. Everyone talks about the heavier the arrow, the more efficient downrange when it comes to speed deprivation. So you're going to start off a whole lot slower, but you're going to lose a smaller percentage of that speed downrange. And that's exactly what we saw here. So the 372 grain arrow at 60 yards lost 10.3% of its total velocity. The 444 grain arrow lost 8.73% of its total velocity. And the 566 grain arrow lost 7.3% of its total velocity. Right here we have um, recommended momentum and kinetic energy numbers for hunting certain types of games. So you have small game, medium game, large game, toughest game. For whitetails, for example, we are focusing on whitetails, you need a maximum of 0 0.30 slug feet per second to pass through that animal. Our goal with all of this information is to see, okay, how do we get there the fastest? Or say you want to hunt elk or a cape buffalo or a grizzly. How do we get to the max amount of slug feet per second as fast as possible? Because everything after, for example, 0 0.30 slug feet per second is wasted energy. It's not doing anything for you. You might as well take that wasted energy and turn it into speed to increase your trajectory and increase the time to target. Let's look at these momentum numbers here. The 372 grain arrow at its launch point has 0.49 slug feet per second of momentum. At 60 yards it has 0.44 slug feet per second, which is totally fine to hunt a whitetail. The next one here we have the 444 grain arrow. Again we have 0.54 slug feet at launch and then at 60 yards it has 0.49 slug feet of momentum, which if you look at the recommended chart for momentum will kill anything in North America. So no issues there with the 444 grain arrow. That one has 10.2% more momentum at 60 yards than the 372 grain arrow. Now, the heavyweight, the 566. If you want to maximize momentum, and that is the only number that you're looking at is momentum, hands down you want to go with the heavy arrow, as this data shows. At launch, you have 0.62 slug feet of momentum, and then as you get to 60 yards, you have 0.57 slug feet of momentum, which is overkill for anything in North America. And that one has 22.8% more momentum than the 372 grain arrow. When you have a super heavy arrow and you have that much momentum, you're giving something up. You're giving up trajectory and you're giving up time. So let's take a look at these numbers here. Here I'm calculating the time it took to get to the target. So at 20 yards, 30 yards, 40 yards, 50 yards, 60 yards, how long did it take for that arrow to get there? Just for the sake of talking in yards rather than feet, I converted the feet per second number to yards per second. And here I just calculated how many seconds or how many tenths of a second it took to get to that target. At 60 yards, the 372 grain arrow took 0.65 seconds. That is the time of flight. The 444 grain arrow at 60 yards took 0.69 seconds to get to target. And the 566 grain arrow took 0.77 seconds to reach the target. Now, there, we're talking tenths of a second here, but what I want to showcase here is if you put that number in percentages, it changes your perspective a little bit. The 444 grain arrow took 5.79 percent longer to reach the target than the 372 which the 372 per the momentum recommendations is going to kill a whitetail every time and it's going to get there 5.8 percent faster so let's look here at the 566 grain arrow this arrow actually took 15.58 percent longer to reach the target than the 372 grain arrow when you think about that you had a crazy amount more momentum but you had too much momentum that it didn't really do anything for you. What you don't have now is a good trajectory and you're giving up time. And in a, the game of hunting, the game of hunting whitetails, time is of the essence. And in our opinion, we would like to maximize our velocity and have enough momentum to pass through the game that we are pursuing. And like I said, you can reference these sheets. You can go to Google 
and search the archery forums. We did not make these numbers up. They're pulled from there. For a medium game animal, which is a deer, is a deer is considered a medium game animal. 0.305 slug feet per second is the recommended amount of momentum. Any of these arrows will suffice. So do you want a heavy arrow? That is up to you. Do you want something super light and super fast? If you're shooting a deer, the data suggests that you would be just fine with that. And for us, my arrow personally falls in that 444 grain range. That is my personal arrow. And I'm pretty good with that on anything in North America. So that makes me happy. The data suggests that any of these arrows is going to do the job. It's up to you to decide what works best for you and your hunting scenario and at the distances that you're hunting. Again, there's going to be a blog in the description of this video that is going to link to these data sets and these charts so you can look at the different velocities and momentums and kinetic energies at those different ranges, speeds, kinetic energies, losses, the whole nine yards. So, so you can go ahead and check all that stuff out for yourself.